got three tape player projects on the go. Um, one that I fixed and works beautifully, but the spring in the door, I couldn't reconnect. When I reconnected, basically a bit of plastic broke off, so that needs arrow lighting. Not a big project, but needs fin finishing. I've also got um, my lovely genuine 80s Sony Walkman, which I love to bits, and it was an absolute bargain, but the headphone jack is faulty, so I need to um, open that up, and hopefully that's a simple fix, but we'll take a look. Pretty sure it's just a jack and not anything um, electronic, it's just a mechanical failure, so that should be easy. Um, and also I have the cheapo Amazon tape player that I built into a drone machine, which I did all the cool stuff, it works, it drones, um, but I didn't quite finish it off. It needs power supply and it needs the outputs fixing. And also I had a suggestion on YouTube that maybe I should add CV, so I'm going to do that, which means I'll be able to put like an LFO signal into it from a synthesizer and, and modulate the speed of the tape player from synth, and I think I can do that in a very basic, simple, not very high-tech way. I'm reasonably confident I've fixed this, um, but I won't know for sure until it's back together. Um, so I did some cleaning and contact cleaner and it, it helped a bit, but it didn't really fix the problem. And I've been kind of nervous about soldering, resoldering any of this, because obviously it's a really nice thing and I don't want to damage it. But some of the joints at the headphone socket, which is where the problem was, they didn't look good. It looked like the solder had kind of pulled away from the pin a little bit. Um, it looked kind of like a weird volcano, which I don't think it should look like. Um, all I did is I haven't sort of cleaned it up and redone it properly was apply a bit of heat from the soldering iron and reflow these two joints for both the left and right. And from a quick test, it seems like that's fixed the problem and I can wiggle this now and it doesn't crackle. The only remaining issue is it started to hum and it didn't hum before, but I'm reasonably confident that the reason it's doing that is I haven't put all the screws back in yet and some of the screws that hold the circuit board down have this sort of shiny um, contact around them and I think that's probably because they're earth screws and once these are all back in that should stop the buzz so fingers crossed I think it's all working but I'll find out very soon. I was feeling a little bit despondent because I put everything back together and I still had that hum even though I was confident I had the screws in the right holes because Another of the elements of this that make it, you know, designed to be repaired is that they've used different diameter screws for different holes. And I love that because it's another sign that, you know, this was meant to be kept and repaired and reused. And I think that's really cool. Uh, it's so frustrating. I can make the hum go away if I squeeze the stop button. I think that means I'm getting closer to tracking down where the earth problem is, but I haven't found it yet. Very, very, very simple. The F screws were not in tight enough. That is literally all it was. I'm so happy. What I love about this is it's obviously from an era where things were expected to be fixed. They were expected to be kept and loved and repaired and not just thrown away as soon as they had a fault. And you can see that in the details. It's obviously been made with a repairer in mind. You've got Everything's labelled up, every, everything's big enough to work on. You've got arrows that are pointing to things like where the screws that are crucial need to go. So those are the earth screws that I mentioned. Um, the, the the recess pot that's used to, um, so it's like a trim pot that's used to control the speed. If the speed's out of spec, that's arrowed with fast and slow. It's Everything's labelled, everything's obvious, um, even for someone like me who's pretty new to all this. This is something that's made to be appreciated and repaired and loved. And I think, well, my hope is that in the future we're going to go back to that because the right to repair is something that's come in legally. And I just hope manufacturers respond to that. And it's not just like a token effort because the more we can do this sort of stuff, the more we can fix stuff, the less resources we're potentially taking. And also it's really satisfying when you bring something back to life. I'm genuinely really happy.